Last month, we saw Ricky Wasaki take a four-stroke lead over Nate Cron at the end of round two at the Patapsco picnic. Today brings us round three and a final nine, and last year's champion, Paul Uliberry has moved his way up to the lead card. Can Paul repeat the magic of last year and win back-to-back, or will Ricky Wasaki dominate the remaining rounds? To find out, stay tuned as Disc Golf Monthly starts now. Welcome to another edition of Disc Golf Monthly. We're in Marriott'sville, Maryland for the 2012 Patapsco Picnic Disc Golf Tournament. Hello everyone, I'm Carl Cubbage and I'm joined by fellow disc golfer, a legend in Delaware, Jimmy McIlvain. Jimmy, we're here for day two of the Patapsco Picnic. Last month we covered day one, two rounds of that event, and now we're going to cover and a whole uh, round of 18 for the third round, and then a final nine. And uh, we've got quite a group of uh, gentlemen that we're going to be covering today. Tell us a little bit about what happened during the first day of this event. Uh, in the first day, Ricky sort of uh, got out to a little bit of a lead in the first round. Uh, yeah, Nate and uh, Tom and Jeff battling it out there in that second round. Uh, but Tom sort of fell off, and Nate and Jeff you know, tried to stay as much as they could, and Ricky just slightly got a little bit farther ahead. Uh, the big move, though, was Paul Uliberry. He came in off of, like, uh, the second or third card. And uh, so sort of a bunching up right there. Well, Jimmy, we talked about the course history and the, uh, and the course itself during last month, so we're going to kind of dispose of that this time. But uh, your thoughts as we go into the second day of this event, what it's going to take uh, with the five players that we're going to be covering today? Well, I think that uh, Ricky's got, you know, a lead uh, – Probably the, the most pressure is on him and Nate, uh, especially the first few holes. Uh, having a lead like that, if anything gets away from you, you're sort of like, oh, I don't want to get rid of that lead, you know? Uh, Nate's going to have to, like, either decide to either really push it or, like, let Ricky make some mistakes. Well, before we get into that uh, final nine coverage, it should be exciting with the top five pros that we're going to cover today. We're going to go down to that great segment of previous round highlights and see how they were throwing them during the third round. All right, we've got Paul Uliberry's drive on hole three. Nice and smooth. Nate Crime putting on hole two. Nate puts it right into the chains. Nice putt there. Matthew Evans, drive on hole nine. Looking good. Oh. The horn didn't seem to bother him. Got a deuce spot there. Ricky Wazaki playing on hole three. From down under, right over the rim and into the chains. Brandon Napier, drive on hole 15. Looks pretty good. Nice turnover. Little wood at the end. Jay Goldberg played on hole 10. Jay, solid putt there. Joe Gustafson driving on hole 11. Little Joe with a big rip. Nice shot. Ian Liddell played on hole 10. Ian right in the center. Brendan Holden driving on hole 11. Nice rep. Oh! Looked like it was an ace, but that <laughs> would have been a black ace. All right, we've got Katrina Allen playing on hole 14. High putt puts it into the chains. Ricky Wasaki driving on hole 11. Ricky with another big rip. Fading out. Look out. Nevada has been. Played on hole 16. Navid puts it right in there. Good putt, Navid. Navid driving on hole 17. Oh, a little wood. Mike Moser played on hole three. The Delaware Deucer cans it. 
Andy Slater driving on hole 10. Another nice drive. Matt Kashima putting on hole eight. Very nice putt there, Matt. Happy to see that one go in. All right, Paul, Eula Berry driving on hole 11. <laughs> These guys can rip it. And that's it for the previous round highlights. Well, Jimmy, it's always great to see everybody showcased during the previous round highlights. Right. And what it looked like almost a hole in one was uh, the shorter basket on that one throw. But we saw great putting as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, Black Ace was really exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Katrina, Katrina made a couple of big putts in there. Uh, once again, it looks like, you know, Ricky and, and Nate and the same guys were out pushing it again. Well, we got to see the course showcase during the third round who are we going to follow during this final nine holes of the event we got a great card here jimmy yeah uh leading the tournament is ricky wazaki from fort mill south carolina with a 169 uh second place is nate crime from bluebell pennsylvania with a 174 paul uliberry in third from phoenix arizona with 178 and Jeff Bennett from Canton, Michigan, 179. And Mike Moser from Wilmington, Delaware with a 188. Well, Jimmy, these are all great players. Tell me a little bit about these five uh, players. Give us a little reflection uh, on your experience and tell our uh, viewers a little bit about the players. Uh, Ricky, Ricky Wazaki was uh, an, the, am, the amateur junior champion in 2010. Uh it was, it was the rookie year last year. We're talking two years ago. Two here, Jimmy. years ago. I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty insane. Uh, in two years, he was able to go from a junior champion to uh, finishing second at the Worlds. Uh, he won his first major last year in his rookie year. Uh, Nate Cron, you know, he, he's he's been on the scene here in uh, in the Mid Atlantic area for probably you know the last six seven years. Uh, Paul Yulberry was really been hot in the last five or six years. So There's like that whole group of young guys with him, Jeff Bennett. Uh, and then, of course, you got Mike Moser. Uh, the class, veteran. The veteran of, of this, not only this group, but, you know, one of the top three or four players in, in, in this whole area probably for the last, you know, 10, 15 years. Right. Well, that's, that's an exciting group of five players. Folks, we're going to cover the final nine. Before we get into all that action, you're going to see some great disc golf out there. We're going to take a quick break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. For years, Disc Outfitters has been your online resource for taking care of all your disc golf needs, including creating custom-made disc golf apparel for tournaments and clubs. Get ready for the DO Days monthly event at the Rock Room Branch Disc Golf Course as well as the D.O. Series Point League. For more info, stop in at their Disc Golf Warehouse at 9691 Columbia, Maryland, or call or click today. Welcome, everybody, to our final nine coverage in day two of the 2012 Patapsco Picnic. And here it is. You can see Ricky Jimmy with a big lead, five stroke. That's going to be a lot for the field to overcome. That's a lot for the field to overcome. All right, here we are. We're starting on basket two. This is a par three, 423 feet. This is a really tunnel shot, very tight, uh, really tough deuce. Nice low shot. Wow, look at that go, go all the way to the basket. Okay, it wasn't, an, it wasn't a tough deuce. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay, Nate steps up. He's got to put the pressure on. That one got away a little bit early. Yeah.
Paul gets some good distance down there. He's about pin high on the yeah, left. He have a putt. Here's Jeff's going to throw the old forehand shot. Forehand roller, maybe. Mm. Oh, tough early tree, and then off to the left. And the legend, Mike Moser, the Delaware Deucer. He's he's been a legend for quite a while. Catches a little bit of the tree there. Yeah, Ricky just put the pressure on immediately on the very first hole on everyone. And you can see Nate's got not a f real easy stance there that he's got to pull through, but gets a good pull down the alley. Should have a putt anyway. Here's a recovery shot. Jeff's got to pull off. He's out. Wow, Mike did not have much of a release, and he put it right there. All right, can Nate strike here? Wow, just under the basket. Paul with a jump putt. Oh, oh right off the top the of the rim. Ah. Good effort. Jeff with a clean line to the basket. Takes the jump putt. Catches rim as well. Oh, Mike just goes off to the left. And Ricky finally steps up. <laughs> And just pours in that easy too. That is a big You drive. can hear the gallery really happy with that. All right, well, we've, we see it right there. A seven stroke lead right there after the first hole. Uh, yep, I think now we're playing for second. All right, we're on to basket three, Jimmy. This is a par four, 539 feet. There's a man there down here on the left-hand side. Jimmy, there's a big gallery behind these guys. How does that affect you when you stand up the tee and you've got that many people watching you? I, I, most of these guys are probably used to it. When you first, when it first starts happening, it, it, it'll start messing with your head. That disc is not coming down. It's up there. Well, it finally did come down on that high shot. Paul takes a lower route. That's about as perfect as it gets. You know, a hole like this, you're either, you know, either just taking, you know, trying to just take the three, or you're, you know, trying to set yourself up for an easy, easier three. All right, a little branch and then a trunk there, but he's out in the open. There goes a sky roller. Looks like it might have turned over a little early, but caught a tree. Sure, if he made the man there. down. Yeah. yeah, he made it. Oh, Nate fires it down, catches the trunk. Now we're going to see some baskets there, Jamie, but those are the short basket positions there. Right. The, the course has two baskets and two tees for every hole. So we're playing the green monsters. The baskets that are green are the ones they're throwing to. Yes. Nate for the birdie. Just off the top. Not sure if he had any roll away on that or not. Yeah, this is a pretty evil green. Oh, top, middle, and bottom. Does not stay in. Ricky for another birdie. <laughs> Ricky with that style of holding one putter in his non-throwing hand. I guess you I play like you practice, and if that's how you practice, Works for him. Good view of Nate here on his fourth throw. 
That's a tough break there. Uh, yeah, Jimmy. I, I, I feel I, I, you just have to. You feel bad. I mean, it, suddenly it's a nine-stroke lead. Absolutely. He's going to have to start watching out for Paul and Jeff coming up Absolutely. behind Absolutely. Here, we're on to basket four. This is a par four, 505 feet. Uh, about halfway to the basket, there's an OB road. A little wood there. Some early wood. I gotta believe most of, these, most of these guys could reach the other side, but you really just want to play to just short of the road. Just take the road right out of it. Caught a tree as well. Yep, Mike turned that over a little bit too far to the right. Little branch heads off to the left. I don't know, maybe the gallery is bothering a couple of these guys a little bit. It seems a little off there. Not that I play in front of a gallery ever, <laughs> but I know it gets me a little wound up a little tight when that does happen. When Big one or roller. two people happen to be behind me. All right, let's see if that one stayed OB or inbounds. I think it's inbounds. I think he actually rolled all the way back across the road. Only the roads are big. Ricky gets tremendous power off that forehand as well. And that was a tremendous wow. shot. <laughs> that was smoking. They might line up a roller. You can actually come up on this road. And that's what he's trying. Wow, that was and great that looks pretty good too. Looks like we only have about three birdie chances here. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff came all the way back across. Trying to thread it through and hit some of the holly branches there. Oh, that was a good looking putt, just a little bit low. That was a tremendous roller by Mike. Poured it right in there. I think Nate really needs this. There we he go. He did. Put it right yeah, back in. Yeah, that's one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nate's back into it. <laughs> that's a great, you know, great sense yeah. of humor of, of dealing with all of that, Jimmy. And Ricky ah. just drops in another birdie, though. I mean, it's... All right, well, we had four birdies in the bogey on that hole. Ricky's still in the driver's seat moving on as we move on to basket five. This is a par three, 474 feet. Okay, this is the only place that the road plays OB and across. Um, you're going to see a lot of flick shots, rollers, anything to keep the disc from finishing left. That sounded like afterburners as it was going by. I'm not sure. He got a bad roll, though. He's really close to being OB. Roller down. Hit early trunk. Mike gets the backhand roller down. He goes right up a tree as well. Yeah, this is uphill, so I don't really think anybody's got a chance of actually deucing this, but just staying away from the OB is really what you're looking for. Very low sh forehand shot there. 
Skips nicely. Settle. All right. Took okay. a roll towards the OB, but came back. I think Paul's going to be trying to go out for another roller out on the road. That is a gutsy shot. That was. Yeah. One little miss hit, and it's going the other yeah. way. Yeah, a tough wow. break as Mike yeah. goes out of bounds to the left. Play with a solid release there. This is an incredibly hard par three. It's <laughs> Jeff goes to the low forehand, trying to bring it around. Dang, Mike, side arm. Side arm. Mike with a big sidearm. <laughs> it's on it's on film too. <laughs> <laughs> a shot that you won't see from Mike Moser that often. No. Ricky got lucky. Ricky did have a bad roll, but he did stay in bounds. Caught a tree there. Paul takes it high around the tree and dead nice into the climb. chains. Wow, you know, Ricky was a little shaky that hole and still grabs the par. Yeah, I mean, even being shaky, his drive was still like well ahead mm. of everyone else's. All right, Mike pours it in. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. 1,200 American youth run away from their homes every day. The National Runaway Switchboard is here to help. 1-800-RUNAWAY. If you are a runaway, thinking about running away from home, or a parent or guardian concerned about issues facing your child, call us 24 hours a day. 1-800-RUNAWAY. In times of crisis, hope is just a phone call away. 1-800-RUNAWAY. Welcome back, everybody. We're on basket seven. This is a par five, 629 feet. Yeah, there's another Mando down here on the right-hand side. Uh, Early branch knocks that down into the center of the fairway. I was actually shocked to see him throw on the backhand there. I. I I would have figured it would have been a forehand or a roller. Paul well, takes a little lower line there, but catches a tree as well. Nate gets the roller down. There's the roller. When that thing is moving, caught a tree right by our cameraman. Man is right there by that short basket. Heading right down the middle, fading a little bit left. All right, sitting in the open. Mike Moser gets the backhand roller down. Tough break there right against the yeah. tree. Our leader's second throw. Whole bend's really hard right, right after the Mando. Caught some more wood. That is a pretty shot. Very nice. He's right up against that tree. But just drills it down the middle. Good view of Nate's second shot. 
Got a little window there. It nails it. No. Hit right. Maybe too much. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, that was a tough little window to hit there. Yeah. Once you get down into this on this hole, it, it, unless you're right here where Mike's at, it, it, there's just, it it too, you know, to get to the basket, uh, you have to find one of those little holes and just go for it. Wow, this would be nice here if Paul can hit this one. Oh, he got uh, the change just off to the left. I think Paul's starting to feel it a little bit. Wow, just the top of the rim for Ricky. All right, that was for Eagle. Jeff nice Bennett, three. very nicely done. Mike finishes up. You saw that Eagle by Jeff Bennett, impressive. Ricky marches on. And here we are at basket eight. This is a par three, 430 feet. It's just a big sky hyzer shot through the woods. <laughs> There's like one or two gaps in here you gotta try to hit. There's so much danger. Well, well nice shot out by the Mike. Thing. There it is. <laughs> This is probably Mike's 15th or 20th year playing this wow. event. Yeah, Mike Moser sponsored by Innova Masters team. <laughs> Nate Cron sponsored by Disc Craft Tour team. Nice shot. Going right at it. Oh, Maybe a little long. Just missed. It's like the second hole in a row. I think mm. he just went a little long on his. Sometimes things just <laughs> aren't working for you. You know, it just, even good shots just end up not quite in the right place. Jeff Bennett also sponsored by Discraft Tour team. Just misses to the right. Wow, no metal on that one. Solid putt. Ricky is sponsored by End of a Star Team. Paul is also sponsored by End of a Star Team. All right, with three pars, two bogeys there. We're uh, running out of holes here, Jimmy. We are, and we're uh, seeing some great disc golf as we move on to basket 10. This is a par three, 529 feet. It's a downhill hole, and the basket comes back up the hill off to the right. Only rollers and flicks. Using the train nicely there. Up, coming down, almost gets the cameraman, rolls yeah. back out into the fairway. <laughs> I think Ricky's on his victory lap here. I would have expected him to throw a <laughs> flick shot there, but I think he's just having fun now.
Ice roller by Jeff. It's like it caught something on the way out. Mike wow. with a nice little upshot. Wow, that was close. Yeah, Jeff might as well just run for everything now. Mm. Nate going right at it. Wow. Nice shot. Mm -hmm. Wow, gets a good kick off the tree. Ricky with the jump putt. Ricky putts with the pro JK AVR. And Nate putts with the X Soft Challenger and X Soft Focus. Paul and Nate here having a little fun. Paul puts with a DX Classic AVR. All right, folks, here we go. Bogey from our leader, but he's got a big lead. Moving on to basket 18, par 4, 604 feet. Yeah, the, this is another just super long, big hyzer. Plays back up the hill. The only real danger is on your left-hand side. Or their right hand. Great side. camera work as we watch that disc come back into the tree line. It's you know, Jimmy, I don't know if a lot of our viewers know this, but this is a one camera operation at Disc Golf Monthly to see all the great shots that we get to see on Disc Golf by our cameraman producer, Kevin McGorry. It's awesome, outstanding. I would urge anybody that wants to give a little to PayPal, uh, send it Kevin's way, doing great work. Yeah, this is this is a tough course for one camera. I mean, there's just a lot of different angles in the distance on here. Nice high shot. Heading back into the tree line. Wow, and that tough break catch the one little branch yeah, is hanging it, out there. You know, Nate's got to be a little careful there, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, that that's you know that's where I was talking about. Paul is knocking with. on the door, one stroke away. I mean, as much as he had a chance to catch Ricky, I mean, Paul had the same chance to catch him, and it's about a stroke off now. Yeah, that's just catching some bad breaks, Jimmy. Tough break. Wow, our leader is looks like he's in jail there, but gets out nicely. Uh, he's right just got it the basket working right now. He's just got it working right <laughs> you now. You said it, Jimmy. He's got it working. That's a smooth release there. Wow, I thought he was going to can that one. And so does Paul. Like I said, Paul had the least pressure on him. He was in the middle. He didn't really have, you know. Hang back, play solid. And there it is. Wow, and that ties it up with Nate. Yep, look at that. We've got a tie there for second. Made it a little bit interesting. Yeah. Three birdies, two pars. Here we go. Basket one, Jimmy, par four, 630 feet. Game on between second place here. Yeah, these guys are going to all probably rip a big, big hyzer shot out here. The only danger, is like, once again, is that backstop. You know, the problem with losing a lead like that is it starts to wear on you. You know, you had to, you had, you, you know, he had to have thought he was going in for a second immediately. You know, I talked about all the competitors' putters. Jeff uh, Bennett uses a defocus for a putter. Jeff with a big S turn flick shot. 
That road is OB there. I couldn't tell if he made it to the road or not, Jimmy. Wow, nice shot there. Yeah, incredible power. Okay, Nate needs to really do something here. Sends a low shot out. He should be fine there, though. Might throw in a roller. Gets that one down nice and early. And stayed in bounds. Very nice. <laughs> Mike's second shot. He's going up high, cutting it around. Yeah, Mike probably had the most relaxed round of anybody. I mean, he wasn't going to no make a pressure move. at all. Yeah, right. no pressure. He was just out of your plan. Smooth skip shot. You can see the basket there just to the right of that car. This is where Ricky's so good. This gentle little flick approach shot. Mm. Almost that canned almost it there. <laughs> Nate needs this badly. <sighs> Just threw it low. A mm. little bit short there. Tough break. Paul with a jump putt. And he puts it right there. Yeah. So Nate needs this Nate now. Nate needs this putt right here for them to stay tied. Takes the jump. Wow. Oh, just missed it. Mm, he, got, he gave it a shot. Mike Bozier cans oh, it. Oh, no, it fell Plow out. It fell out. I oh. thought it stayed. Why? And Ricky to finish the victory lap. Yeah, what's that got to do to your confidence when you've run through it like that, huh, Jimmy? I mean, great putt to finish. Ricky Happy man there, Ricky Wasaki. What a great event. That's two weekends in a row that he's won wow. after finishing second at the Worlds. It's got to be a confidence booster going into the rest of the season. Absolutely. Well, Nate falls out a second, but he played well, Jimmy. He had to he had to take it to him. You gotta respect him for giving it the run. Yes. Some tough breaks. Jeff finishes up. Mike Moser finishes. And Paul Uliberry. Wow, that was a good final nine there, Jimmy. Some great throws by all the players. Three bar birdies and two pars there. Great victory for Wiki, Ricky Wasaki. Um, and a good battle by the rest of the guys and some great skills. We're going to do uh, a quick break, Jimmy, and uh, we'll come back and do the final wrap-up at the 2012 Patapsco Picnic. Well, Jimmy, I don't know what to say. I mean, Ricky was on a tear and took this event handily. Uh, yeah, the first two holes. I mean, he, he, he ended it. I mean, really, uh, like I said, the pressure was on him and Nate. Uh, it was like he felt no pressure. Uh, the young, you know, for a young kid of 19, he, you know, sat there and deuced the first hole, buried the second hole, and from then he was, you know, nine strokes ahead and just coasted. Well, Nate knew what he had to do, and he tried to give him the push. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think that's where, you know, like I said before, do you, do, you, do you try to push it 
or do you sort of lay there and wait, you know, uh, Nate, tra Nate played for first place. So I give him credit for that. Uh, but I also got to give credit, you know, to Paul Uliberry for, you know, just, just playing a steady, steady game and being able to get second place. Absolutely. Well, we, we saw some great disc golf from all five of the players. Some great shots on a great course. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with Mike, and Mike, Mike was sort of out of this, and he was able to throw a couple of really nice rollers, uh, a couple side arms. He was having fun. Uh, Ricky just, but but in the end, I mean, you know, like I said, the first three or four holes, Ricky just just totally dominated and uh, threw some really awesome shots. I, I was blown away by the, the power that he gets coming off that tee. I mean, when you see him rip that disc, it just keeps on going and going. Yeah, I mean, to throw a 425-foot shot, do a little tunnel on his very first hole. The third the third hole, I think he ended up throwing close to a 400-plus-foot you know, I could do that two with, shots. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm not like, you know, I, it, overall, just good golf. Absolutely good golf. And it was a great event, folks. I hope you'll get out to Patapsco and get to play the course. It's outstanding. And maybe make the event yourself next year. Well, that's all we have for this episode. I'm Carl Cubbage for fellow disc golfer Jimmy McElvain. This is Disc Golf Monthly, the show that takes you one step closer to the sport of disc golf. Well, like Paul said, Brian, the man here, uh, I want to thank them and uh, Disc Golfers and company, and uh, I wish them luck, you know, good luck with that. Um, but I want to thank them and uh, Ben, for uh, stay there, we stay, we stay, we stay there all week, and uh, I want to thank them and uh, thank my sponsors, Interval, Hook, Lab, and Grip. Thanks, guys. You're the man. Yeah.